All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to take another look at the TID radio, the TDH8. And there's a little bit of a story, a little bit of a backstory here. So I was originally contacted by TID radio and they asked if I would do a video review of their products. And I said, yeah, because I like to do video reviews. So they sent me this radio. When I got it, I ran it through a couple of tests. There'll be links below to some videos that I did kind of documenting what we found when we did those tests. But in a nutshell, um, we found a lot of spurious emissions on this radio, making it illegal for use. We also found out that um, these boot very fast. I'll, I'll give them that. I like that. Um, when you transmit, I'm sure you can hear that, uh, on 146520, you get that goofy noise. And the pitch and the intensity of that noise changes when you touch the contacts on the battery. Also, some people were reporting that when you touch these contacts, they get very hot and we were unable to discern if it was an RF burn or if it was just getting hot and causing some kind of thermal burn. Um, I did key this up and I was touching these contacts and I felt something tingling in my fingers, but uh, I wasn't able to tell if it was just normal heat or if it was if it was actually an RF problem or not. So. Uh, you know, I communicated with the vendor and let them know what was going on. They were very, very professional and very nice about the whole thing. And they told me they were committed to fixing it and making it better. And what they did is they sent me another radio, a second radio. This one had all of the same problems that the first radio had. And I let them know and I told them and they said they were going to send me another battery. I'll roll a picture of how that came in. It was just the battery. It was just this battery right here. And I tested the battery on the two radios that I had, same problems, nothing fixed. And then they sent me another radio, and I'll roll in a picture now of how this, this radio shipped. And so I got it, and the first thing I did is I connected the, the, the battery that they sent me, and let's go ahead and turn it on. And we are on 146520, and when I key it up, now you may have heard something there. But that is not the same noise. What that is, is the radio keying up and interfering with my microphone and my cable, even though my cable is toroid wrapped. So it appears they fixed that issue. So that's plus one in the TID radio category. And so I was curious. I said, you know, well, was the battery what fixed that or not? So what I can do is let me just pop this battery off real quick and turn it off before I do that. So I don't, so I don't electrocute myself and I labeled it new so I would know which battery it was and let's go ahead and put that on the original radio that they sent me and here we go we're powered up and you could hear that and so the battery did not fix it <clears throat> so that wasn't the uh wasn't the issue, at least for that noise. I didn't test the spurious emissions or anything like that on that radio with the new battery. <clears throat> so I left the screen cover on here. Don't make fun of me. I left it on there so I don't mix them up. So now we have the new radio with the new battery, and we are going to do some tests, and we're going to see how well it performs. So without uh, further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so here's the new radio, and we have it connected up to my oscilloscope. And let's turn this baby back on. Welcome. And we are on. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch my screen to my scope screen. And one of the tests that we've been doing lately is keying up and looking at the carrier signal and seeing how the waveform looks. And there can be problems when the waveform doesn't look good. So that's one of the initial tests that we do just to get an idea of how well the radio performs. So I am keying, going to key this up and oh, I got to connect it to the wrong port. There we go. Let's key it up and do some adjusting real quick. And what we have there is a very nice, very clean looking signal. And let me go ahead and capture it real quick. So I don't have to keep the radio keyed up, but what you have here is a very nice, clean sinusoidal wave. In some of my other videos, and you can check out my channel, we test radios that don't have this clean sinusoidal wave. And the reason it's important for your carrier to be clean is that the information that we put into the radio, in most cases, it's our voice. It could be APRS or anything else. 
The radio takes that information and modulates it on top of the carrier signal. If you have a deformed carrier signal or something that has distortion in it, then your output signal is going to have those problems. And we don't see that right now. So that is a very nice plus one for the TID radio. Now, one of the things I started to think about was, is that, well, maybe they just lowered the output power of this radio. Um, this radio is supposed to go up to 10 watts. So we are going to do a quick power test on this and we're going to see if indeed they just lowered the power in order to fix the problem. Okay, so what we have here is our Nisei SWR and power meter, and we have our radio connected to the power meter. And we are set on 14652, and we are set for low power. So let's go ahead and key that up. And we get about 1.3 forward watts, which is about what I expected. So let me go into the menu. And let me go menu options, changes to mid, hit menu to save, and exit. And so now, oh, Jesus, now on this radio, you can see the M up here for medium power. And we're looking at around 2.9 watts, which we'll check the manual and see what these should be. And then uh, let's go ahead and hit menu, switch to high, exit. And this should be 10 watts. And we're looking at about 7 point whatever out of there. Now, I guess you could make an argument and say, hey, maybe that cable has got some attenuation that it's causing a little bit of an issue or something like that. But uh, let me go ahead and just switch this radio out with the old one. And then we'll check the power output on that and see if we have an issue. So now you can see that I am connecting the old radio. Just to make sure I'm not doing any shenanigans, you can see that there is not the uh, plastic cover on here. And this is set for high right out of the gate, so let's just go ahead and key up. And if you take a look at that, it's actually putting out less power. Uh, that might have something to do with the battery being low, but it's not low enough that it should make a difference. So based off of that, what I'm going to say is the power output on the new radio is actually on high exceeding the power output on the old radio. So I'm not going to suspect that they lowered the power to get a cleaner signal. Uh, not that that would really work anyway, but I just wanted to rule it out because I know some of the naysayers in the video would get upset at me if I didn't do that. So let's get this thing connected to a spectrum analyzer and do a, a, a spectral purity test. Okay, we have the TID TDH8 connected to the spectrum analyzer. In this case, it's a Siglin SAA 3021X. And I have the radio set to low power, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key up, and we're going to see what we see. <clears throat> and that's pretty dang on clean. So when I take a look at this, one of the things I want to say is, is that any harmonics or spurious emissions need to be 40 dB down from the fundamental. When I key up, you see the fundamental go all the way up to the 30 uh, reference line. And the blue line in there is a line that denotes any spurious emissions need to be below that. Um, even if they are 40 dB down, they still need to be below that. And we are clean as we can be. We're doing a sweep from uh zero hertz all the way up to 2.1 gigahertz and we are not seeing any harmonics on this thing so uh that looks pretty good and looks like it passes i don't know how they did that if you go back and take a look at my other video when we tested the original one it looked like a porcupine it had so many spurs now if i go ahead and i adjust the power level to medium uh let's go back to that and menu and exit we're keying up and it's still very, it's still very, very clean. And what I can do is I can also go and set it to high menu. And we're clean again. <clears throat> so whatever they did, it's magic. So what I want to do now is I'm going to turn this off. We're going to take a look at the firmware versions on these two radios. All right, so I'm taking a look at the two radios, and let me go ahead and go into the menu. This is the old one, and then you can see that that says HAM 23 for 2023 0317. So that's a March 17 date on that firmware. The new radio does have 
it's ham version 23 for 20, 2023 08 19 so this has a new version of the firmware on it now in terms of the internals of the radio i don't know if anything's different one of the things i will say in my earlier videos a lot of the ham bros in the comments bless their hearts said it was a bad antenna and that i needed to replace the antenna because if i did that it would go away well these are the two original antennas and both of the old radios have the same problems with these antennas the new radio does not so i'm going to go ahead and say that it's not the antenna I originally thought it was the battery, and I think it still was for that noise because when I hooked this radio up to a power supply, the noise went away. But I also wasn't touching the contacts, so maybe it was some sort of issue internal to the radio or a grounding issue that made itself prevalent when the battery was grounded to, to a different ground plane. What we're not going to do in this video is going through how to program these, how to use the Bluetooth, how to use the CPS. There's tons of other videos on this uh, radio, and it's overplayed. Uh, when I started doing the testing that I do on these radios, I didn't see any really uh, other videos that showed that. So what I do want to say is that uh, TDI, you fixed it and I'm shocked. I really am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with TDI to see if I can actually apply the new firmware to the legacy radios and see if that makes a difference or not. But um, you get a clean pass from me on this. I'm shocked. I'm surprised. And I'm very happy to see that they uh, they did this. It's a shame that that work wasn't done in the in the first place. But at least they got fixed. Now, in terms of buying one of these things, I don't. I can't speak to the stock at any of the vendors or retailers. I don't know what you would get. Um, that said, thanks to TDI for sending this to me. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.